if last you want time. to, yes, I talked about it, yeah, it's fine. All right. There's and, a bunch uh, of them that uh, never made the street. And on, on this right here, was that from uh, VHS hooked up to the Channel F, or was that an emulator? That was that Channel F right there hooked yeah. up to a capture oh, yeah. card, and it, the one sitting on the, on the chair. Uh, that was hooked up to a capture card in Jerry's machine last night uh, when I was frantically trying to capture some, and couldn't get any audio, though. It wouldn't cooperate with the one. Yeah. yeah. Well, as far as it was, we, we the audio wasn't a two-tone, but it was digitized audio. And what we used to have, the original one didn't have it uh, built into the signal that went to the TV set. It was on a speaker that was built into the box. Uh, we, we got more sophisticated. We put it into an FM modulator that went inside the unit and went over the cable. Out. Uh, it was at 4.5 megahertz, just like it would be normal television. But when we first introduced it, it had its own speaker built in the box body. Okay. It sees anything against the wall as a piece of capacitance. That's what it means. So okay. stick a piece of wood up there with no nails on the Okay. Huh. Um, I just I wondered if it was a coincidence that they have the, they, that they're still the same yellow as the Fairchild cartridges. Like, did they buy a bunch of yellow plastic when they? <laughs> <laughs> it's just silly because that's it, it, they have been ever since they were invented and. Uh, it just seemed maybe it's some kind of crazy coincidence, but that's the that's the video cartridge in Stud Finder. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, they, they you know they look the same size. Yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> that's true. I thought, oh, same company, same color. I don't know. I don't know. No, it doesn't do what it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in fact, the the molding for that was done in L.A. by uh, another one of the company. One of the tricks that uh, we got into was the problem. Was the way the hand controllers were being used in some cases being broken very easily. And we first the first unit we made, the hand controllers weren't de detached. So again, that we learned the hard way because they were breaking. And but what happened is that some of the games were really rough on it. Like Dragster was one. Because people had to switch it and do a quadrant shift like the shift in the car. And we finally started to change the basics of them by taking the plastic and ingraining uh, fibers in it to make it tougher. But again, like I said, there's no guarantees when you're dealing with a consumer. Because he'll, you know, he'll sit on it, jump on it, do everything he needs to do. Yeah. Right, thank you. See, like I said, this thing here, the trick in making it even cheap enough is that Ron Smith, who's the genius at doing molding operations, this thing came out of the mold in pieces, but the inner core of it was almost done in one piece. And the trick is not to have trailers in the truck, but on the mold itself, the plastic comes in to inject into the cavities. And what you try to do is not to have these things hanging on. If you've ever seen model airplanes, they bring in this little sheet with all these connectors on it, and the kids have to rip them off. Mm -hmm. Well, the, tri the trick is we had to, these things drop out without having all these connectors on it, so there's no more secondary operation. The, the cost in plastic is how much plastic it uses and how long it stays in the mold. If it stays in the mold for a long time, it may get the cost to up. So we were very, very key on that one. It wasn't until we got to this model that we were able to also start plugging them in because the BB9 connector that's used in this wasn't a high volume connector. Video games made it a high volume. It, because people didn't didn't use it in the high volume application, it wasn't a cheap one. They not it made like bubble gum. Right. So it always takes somebody to lead the way and bring the volume up. If you decide to do something in a certain format and it becomes big enough, people start jumping into the bandwagon and, and supplying that, and that's what happens. So every little new answers had secondary ramifications, and it made it easier for other people to do things because it becomes a standard. Didn't you have a little? Uh <coughs> problem there, the length of the paper or something? Oh, yeah. What we found is that when we were doing our EMI studies, we found that there was a particular frequency of radiation that would not go away. We did everything we could to try to get it to go away. And it was just causing all kinds of things. Up now, it's just one thousand frequency. And I'll never forget the night, Will and I were both working on it. We worked till about 2 o'clock in the morning, and we were just beaten pissed. 
And we went home, and I was sitting still on the bed because I couldn't sleep. And it suddenly came to me what the problem was, and I grabbed the phone and I called Will, and that's it. You ready for bed? No, I'm sitting on my bed. I said, well, get ready. I'm going to pick you up and come back to work. He said, what is it? Never mind. Come on, let's go. So I picked him up, drove him to the plant. He said, okay, what is it? What is it? I said, okay. What's the frequency of the problem? I had 60 something, something, megahertz. It's okay. What's that in wavelength? Yeah. Measure it. Yeah. Okay. Take that hand controller cable together and measure it. Boom! Same length. I said, mm hmm. Took a pair of scissors and clap! He went, oh no. That's <laughs> it. We can't make them multiple wavelengths of the clock frequency. <laughs> 